course, our image of the Pittsburgh Steelers etched in stone. Those four Super Bowl championships won in the 70s. But playoffs used to be a rumor around Pittsburgh. As the Steelers would play their games at Pitt Stadium and Forbes Field, another season would go, another season not making the postseason. That would start to change with A, pretty good team, B, a brand new ballpark. October 11th, 1970 was the first time the Steelers would win at their spanking new yard at that confluence of the Allegheny, Monongahela, and the Ohio Rivers. Who was in town at Three River Stadium with the number one draft pick a year before in 69 O.J. Simpson? Terry Bradshaw was the number one draft pick in 1970. A portent of things to come. The Steelers had lost 16 straight, dating back to 1969, and second-year coach Chuck Knoll was still experimenting at quarterback. Bradshaw played the first and third periods. Terry Hanratty played the second and fourth. Hanratty hit Dave Smith with the score to put the Steelers up 10-3 at the half. O.J. Simpson's yards came the hard way against the pre-steel curtain defense, but eventually he tied the score with a short touchdown blast. In the second half, the Bills' defense began harassing both Hanratty and Bradshaw, led by number 82, Al Cowlings, who had been the Bills' first-round pick in 1970. In the fourth quarter, the unpolished but athletic Bradshaw broke a run that was knocked out of bounds on the two. Preston Pearson scored to ice the Steelers' very first win at Three River Stadium. 23-10, Pittsburgh. The Bills of O.J. Simpson would make the playoffs only once. It happened in 1974. They played against the Steelers at Three River Stadium. The result, the same one as you saw four years earlier, a Steelers win. Did somebody say 1974? Yes, that was the year the Steelers first won the Super Bowl. Ah, yes, some of the pieces were in place going into that season. But look at the draft. It is very probable that there is no draft in the history of the NFL by any team in any year that was better than the Steelers draft of 1974. That's the subject of tonight's distant replay. More than 40 years of Steeler frustration melted away in the final seconds of Super Bowl IX. For years, they had laid the foundation for this moment. And just nine months earlier, they had added the final missing pieces in the greatest draft by any team ever. Pittsburgh, on the first round, selects Lynn Swan, wide receiver, Southern California. We took Lynn Swan in the first round, then we came back and took Jack Lambert in the second round. We did not have a third, and so John Stallworth lasted all the way to the fourth. We took John with an early uh, fourth pick, and then we took Mike Webster in the fifth. It's the greatest draft class in the history of the league. We had 17 rookies, 17 make this football team and go on to a Super Bowl. When Steelers veterans sat out the start of training camp due to the NFL player strike, head coach Chuck Knoll was able to pay special attention to his prized crop of rookies. Because of the strike, we had our own identity. So when the veterans came in, they came in to our training camp. And we told them as much. And then the rest was just, let's play football. With a blend of confident rookies and hungry veterans, the Steelers' formula for success was simple. Dominate on defense and grind it out on offense with Franco Harris. Their quarterback situation, however, was a bit more complicated. The third-year man Joe Gillum started the first six games of the season ahead of Terry Bradshaw. But despite his 4-1-1 record, Gillum just wasn't the right man for this offense. Eventually, they benched Gillum and gave the ball back to Bradshaw because they couldn't get him to stop throwing a football. He went to throw the ball every play. Bradshaw's early season demotion came at a point in his young career when he still lacked confidence and struggled with his imperfections on the field. Well, I didn't mean to play bad. I didn't want to play bad. Are you kidding me? I wanted to play good. I wanted, to, I wanted everybody to like me. That was one of my problems. I wanted to be everything to everybody. And, uh... God, it was, it was incredible what, what I allowed it to do to me. Damn near destroyed me, it really did. Get around, just throw it down so I can hit you like a hook. Okay. We got all kind of running room. Yeah. But Bradshaw's leadership eventually took hold. And in the playoffs, he guided the Steelers past the Bills and into the AFC Championship. Hey, 
standing in the Steelers' way were the Oakland Raiders, who had just shocked the two-time defending Super Bowl champion Dolphins. John Madden at the time was the coach said that the best two teams in the National Football League had played today, and this was the Super Bowl. Tuesday when we met, Chuck said, I got news for you. Super Bowl hadn't been played yet, and the best team in the National Football League is sitting right in this room. Well, I tell you, we, to a man, we probably all jumped out of the seat. The words were important, but it was who it was coming from that was more important. When Chuck made the speech, the game was won. Wasn't played, not need another five, six days. The game was won that day. Bottom line is they didn't have a team. The state of mind that our football team was in that day, we could have beaten them at 12 o'clock, 4 o'clock, and at 9 o'clock. Maybe in a real sense, they thought they had won the Super Bowl, but they weren't there. They had to go through Pittsburgh, and we rejected their visas. <laughs> that was the game that put the Pittsburgh Steelers on their way. That was the game that made us true champions and true believers in what we could do. Beating the Vikings in Super Bowl IX was a mere formality. It was the completion of what they had built through the years and solidified on draft day. All the pieces were finally in place, and the Steelers were finally champions. When Pete Rosell gave that trophy to Mr. Bernie, I don't think there was a dry eye in the house. You know, we all just felt so, so good for him. For the city, it was something to hang their hat on. It was a time for the city to stand up and be counted and be recognized for who they are and what they've done. And the Super Bowl happened to be their calling card.